The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, the Father prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. I love the image. Jesus the vine and we the branches. Now whether a limb or a branch, a bough or a twig, we are connected. Everything belongs and everyone belongs. And we draw our juice, our sap, from Christ the vine. Now I'm going to go out on a limb, pun intended. We are conditioned to think of ourselves first as individuals, not as a community. More concerned for self-interest than common good. In a way, we act like Charlie Brown Christmas trees, <laughs> a branch by itself, cut from the tree, a few decorations here and there, to make us look as good as we can. And we've got a problem. What we used to call partisanship in this country is now named sectarianism. Usually this word is used to describe hostility between groups like the Sunnis and Shia in Iraq. We now see the other branches on the tree, neighbors in this country, as enemies. It's not just about ideology anymore. The other political party is seen as the enemy, as alien, as immoral. And the fruits hanging on our trees isn't love, but hatred. Now, I might go out on a limb again and say there are a lot of threats to democracy these days. There are a lot of justice issues that we are passionate about. But we, all of us, are also part of the demonizing and the silencing of those on the other side of the political spectrum. Vine and branches, it's, it's about relationship. Native people speak of all my relations. We are related to vines and trees. We are related to those two-legged and four-legged, winged, those who crawl and those who slide. And we are related to those most different from us, not only for those for whom we raise our prayers and our voices for justice, but we are related to those with whom we disagree sharply. Now, for many personal, spiritual, and religious reasons, I struggle with evangelical Christianity, for example. Yet, I know that we are all branches on the tree, the same tree, and we all name Jesus as the vine that connects us. If we keep growing in faith, if we keep expanding our horizons, there are always more and more branches on the tree, more religions and spiritualities to learn about. The movie Nomadland 
introduces us to communities that we would never imagine. Nomads, unable to live on their savings, social security checks, they move into RVs, trailers or vans. They travel to temporary places for work, such as an Amazon fulfillment center, and they are truly out on a limb, misunderstood. So in the movie Nomadland, we watch Fern, the main character, as she finds community among surprising people, surprising circumstances. When a teenager asks Fern if she is homeless, she replies, no, I'm not homeless, I'm houseless. For Fern is rooted in who she is, and home is something she carries within her. Vine and branches and pruning, ouch, that's in the gospel too. Gardeners trim for the sake of growth that plants may thrive. Pruning is cutting back, trimming limbs and branches. And pruning is painful, not only in our gardens, but in our souls. What's the spiritual pruning? Jesus says that it is for the sake of bearing fruit. Now we think of Paul's fruits of the Spirit, or the fruit of bringing in more people to the faith. Yet in John's gospel, bearing fruit is about love. It's about washing feet. It's about serving others. It's about laying down your life for the sake of another. We're not out on a limb by ourselves. We are grafted to Christ, the source of divine love, a divine love that is expansive, unconditional, life-changing. And our first reading today is the story of an Ethiopian eunuch. This is an awesome story to make this point. But first, before we go there, remember that in human history, there always needs to be an enemy, a scapegoat. One example today is transgender people especially youth, and their rights in society. How ironic that those who protest government out overreach are the ones leading the hateful movement against those who identify as trans. So now, consider the Ethiopian eunuch. It is not often we get a queer, got your attention, character in the scriptures. I don't think I'm going out on a limb. The Ethiopian eunuch is queer, sexless. Some would say he would fall into a transgender category. Now think back to bib biblical times. There was no modern sense of L, G, B, T, or Q. None of those. But the E word? Eunuch. They knew. According to the Torah, eunuchs had no place in the community. They could not have children. And remember, having children was everything. And if eunuchs went to the temple, they wouldn't let them in. Not exactly what First John says, you cannot love God and hate your sibling. But there's more to this Ethiopian eunuch. He's black. And he's considered from the far end of the earth as it was known then. And although a man of rank and privilege in his own land, to Jewish Philip, he's a foreigner. How queer, how strange that the Ethiopian eunuch, and sorry for reducing him to those words, but he has no name in the story. He approaches Philip as a spiritual seeker. Now the seeker had been reading Isaiah about a lamb led to slaughter, about another one cut off with no family and no children, Jesus, the crucified one. Maybe the man read on a few verses because scripture isn't always consistent. Maybe he came across the verses just a little bit later in Isaiah that said that eunuchs 
considered dry trees are indeed welcome in the house of God. Like a limb cut off from the tree, this courageous man senses that he too can be grafted to the vine, that even an outsider is worthy to be in the community. And he says to Philip, here's some water. I may be going out on a limb, but what prevents me from being baptized? The answer is nothing. No human rules, no human regulations, no scriptures or codes, nothing. Nothing prevents God's extravagant welcome from gushing forth like a mighty stream, cleansing and renewing and creating new life. For in baptism, we are grafted to Christ, the tree of life. He is the vine that nourishes us at this table with bread and wine and with all we need to grow and thrive. So what prevents us from letting go, from losing our lives, from going out on a limb and bearing fruit, the fruit of love, that more and more people can be grafted to the vine? We the people of Holy Trinity share our DNA, our sap, if you will, in the Lakeview Lutheran Parish. Not for what we can gain, not for what the other congregations can gain, but for the sake of mission, for the sake of those not yet here. We abide in Christ, and Christ abides in us. There are other branches on the tree. Some are weak, some are withering. What prevents us? What prevents us from going out on a limb, raising our voices and taking risks for the sake of those forgotten and rejected? Nothing. For the gospel is not merely for our personal salvation. It is for the good of the branches all the branches on the tree. For the fruit of Easter is through this self-giving. Amen.